Live on Sports Grid, it's game time decisions. I'm Kevin Walsh with you on a Friday night. Two hours to get you set for tonight's slate, as well as this weekend's the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. Two on Saturday, two on Sunday. The NBA card is exciting, including a huge game between the favorites in the East and the West Celtics Nuggets. College basketball, only one ranked game tonight. It is the Wisconsin Badgers, uh, a big favorite against the Indiana Hoosiers. Uh, one thing to keep your eyes on with that game, again, this, it's a big spread, but Wisconsin does need to make sure they avoid upset. Already dropped the game this week in Big Ten play at Penn State. It is forgivable relative to the rest of the college basketball landscape, but a second loss here would be very damaging. Before we open it up, let's just talk about some breaking news in the National Football League. Uh, that feels like it should have broke a while ago, but it breaks today that Antonio Pierce is set to become the head coach of the Vegas Raiders. And for me, this is the right move. If anything, it was the obvious move for Vegas to make. The decision to go from Bisaccia to Josh McDaniels is not one that I actually had issues with. Bisaccia filled in admirably, but... I thought that this team trying to go for a big swing higher was fine. Was McDaniels the right guy? Obviously, no. But I didn't mind their thought process. But it is not a thought process that I thought they could follow again, especially the way the players have gravitated towards Antonio Pierce in Las Vegas. Is this going to work out long term? Admittedly, I'm cautious on that. This team has to figure out quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously not the answer. Nor Aiden O'Connell, Brian Hoyer. None of that is the case. But Vegas was said to have a mutiny on their hands, including their superstar Max Crosby asking out if Pierce was not made the head coach. All in all for Vegas, you give Antonio Pierce a chance. I have no issue with that. We'll bring our radio audience into the fold. Appreciate all those who are here on the Sports Grid Network, including Sirius XM Channel 159. Kevin Walsh with you here on game time decisions but we'll go from this to the open and uh, with a couple of really fun items to get into tonight including this NBA slate seven games for us to break down uh, we have some meh games Charlotte San Antonio doesn't feature uh, Victor Webanyama but I actually think there's a fun angle uh, in that game Atlanta without Trey Young it's a DeJounte Murray step up spot before he seemingly is inevitably traded to a top contender we heard in Milwaukee today uh, the latest at the top of the NBA who could be interested uh, in his services. Brooklyn uh, makes the trip to the Lakers who are secretly playing some of the worst basketball in the NBA right now. The Brooklyn Nets, they desperately miss Ben Simmons in an unfortunate set of circumstances due to that Brooklyn win total that I did play preseason. Uh, Philly goes to Orlando, laying a number, light number tonight in New Orleans with the Suns' big three in action. The Pacers with a noteworthy game tonight, not only getting Tyrese Halliburton back, but the debut of their newly acquired all-star in Pascal Siakam, leading this to a very big line tonight in Portland. We will talk about that game uh, a little bit. It was almost on card, but some of this information needed to be finalized, and now that it is, uh, we will get into it, but let's talk more about what some people believe is an NBA Finals preview. Boston and Denver, a seven-point line tonight in favor of the Celtics, total 234. As I was getting set through this game, I Wanted to see what we've seen out of Denver this season against the best defenses in basketball. Boston, a top three defense in the association. This is going to be the 13th game this year for the Denver Nuggets against the top seven defenses in the NBA. That is a large enough sample size, especially this early in. In those first 12 games, Denver, an horrific 2-10 and 10 straight up in those games 1 and 11 against the spread. By the way, Denver favored in all but one of those games that they lost. All but one. Philadelphia, the and Sixers won the second leg of a back to back and were only laying about a point and a half at home. So, this spot here tonight at first glance, that's a lot for Boston to be laying. I get it. It's not that all these games have gone under. It's not that Denver's hardly been able to hit their team totals in all of them, but plenty of them. 
But this is just a spot we have not seen the Nuggets step up, including one of their best players. We will talk about that. But when you look at the outright markets for these teams, the futures market here, plus 185 in the conference for Denver, plus 125 in the conference for Boston. That gap nowhere near as big as a seven win difference in their updated win totals here. It shows that Boston is going to still be challenged by Milwaukee and somewhat Philly in that market. Denver, despite not having a rock star start to their season, people not believing enough in the rest of the West. Warriors are a disaster. Lakers are going to have to go through an overhaul. Phoenix is starting to get a lot of respect, I think, in their game-to-game booking. Right, that really short line in New Orleans we mentioned. But what is that going to look like as we get more out of that big three sample size? The Clippers, if you go to the NBA title odds, are the second shortest Western Conference team at plus 950. But as I've talked about this week, last week, the Clippers continue to come with the caveat of if they stay healthy, uh, Denver and Boston are the uh, top two choices to win the NBA championship. Boston, though, the only team under four to one, actually now, uh, again, under three to run at plus 290. We'll open this back out. Take a look at the NFL's playoff bracket here. One versus seven in the NFC on a Saturday night. In the Saturday afternoon slate, it is one versus four. Both number one seeds, though, laying nine and a half points in their opening games here. Uh, The totals, though, way different. In the 50s for San Francisco uh, and Green Bay, that opening game of the division around Baltimore-Houston, our lowest total uh, this weekend, 43 and a half. On Sunday, Detroit lays six and a half to Tampa Bay. And then now a two and a half point line for Buffalo and Kansas City. Earlier in the week, we saw some threes, uh, but those have since evaporated. You go to the conference markets here this season, uh, or for where things sit with this much time left in the season, strong number on the Niners, rightfully so. They will be better than minus 200, I believe, on their money line against Detroit or against Tampa Bay if they're able to get through the Green Bay Packers. Uh, And then you look over here in the AFC side of it. Baltimore's going to be a favorite over, obviously, Buffalo, or Kansas City, but I do think varying degrees, and uh, I think that's why this gap still sits here between Buffalo and KC. I think the Ravens would lay a full field goal to the Chiefs. I think it's under a field goal, though, to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, We'll continue to shift through this there. Uh, I think we have the Super Bowl odds for everybody just to get a sense, and I think you could see... (sighs) Look, this is Tier 1, or the Niners are Tier 1, the Ravens are Tier 2, the Bills are Tier 3, and then we get to Chiefs-Lions as a Tier 4, and then that would be Tier 5. I think you could make a couple of arguments uh, for how this really lines up right now in the outright Super Bowl odds. Where is the value? Again, for me, I've kind of been positioned. I'm not jumping in, nothing really catching my eye. Let's get a quick pick on the board. We'll explain it a little bit more, but I did allude to it. Jamal Murray, under. 29.5 points plus assists in eight games for him this season against top seven defenses, 8-0 to the under. We'll go through the full card next year on Game Time Decisions. as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid.
they were best friends. Like they, they like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Back on Sports Grid Game Time Decisions. Kevin Walsh with you here on a Friday night. Like College Board, uh, as I said, uh, I know Coach is going to get involved with some of the MAC action, uh, so we will hit that. Uh, the ice is like tonight. Uh, as well. Panthers, Wild, Hurricanes, Red Wings, Blue Jackets, Devils, uh, and then the late game, 8.30, uh, the puck will drop in Chicago. Blackhawks, big home dog against the New York Islanders. Uh, so keep your eyes on that. The big game tonight, though, in Boston, Celtics, Nuggets, and I want to get the most up-to-date lines here because this is a climbing number. Uh, some six and a half, I know, were played by people earlier uh, in the day on Boston, but we've seen some seven and a halfs appear. It is currently now sitting seven nearly everywhere on Boston total uh, between 234, 233 uh, as well right now here. There's one 233, some 233s and a halfs, uh, 234. So again, kind of bouncing uh, in that range. I saw this number and had a similar reaction that I, I would imagine a lot of people had, which is that's a lot of points to lay against the Denver Nuggets. And yet in the end, it, it may up being a lot of points to lay uh, against Denver. There's a lot of uh, the spread bets are all on Denver, right? They are a public dog, if you will. But that number is not without reason. Uh, The Denver Nuggets this season have played 12 games against top seven defenses. Those teams are Minnesota, Orlando. This is their first game against Boston, Cleveland, Philadelphia, Houston, and Oklahoma City. Now they've played Minnesota, Cleveland, and Philadelphia just once, lost all those games. The Orlando Magic twice, lost both. Four games against the Rockets, one and three. They are one and three against the Rockets and three games against the Thunder. They are one and two. So the only two wins they've had are teams that they've played three different times uh, this season. But they are, so that also means they, by the way, are 0 and 5 against top five defenses in basketball, which Boston is. But I added in the Houston and OKC because just because you add two wins, it does not make it look any better. And one of those wins against the Rockets was not a cover. So they are 1-11 against the spread this year against top seven defenses, booked as a favorite in 11 of 12 of these games. It is horrific what Denver has done against the best defenses in basketball. And one of those reasons could be Jamal Murray. I'm on Jamal's under tonight, 29.5 points plus assists. The only worry for me on this prop is that he just went under it against the 76ers. So it's you're now lining up for consecutive unders, but he's averaging 16.5 points per game in eight games against top seven defenses, which for Jamal Murray is absolutely unacceptable. Now it is 7.3 assists, his assist prop tonight, seven and a half at plus money. But I add both because we've seen 
two 20 plus point performances from Jamal uh, where he maybe could clear a points prop we have not seen him though have two great games in this category simultaneously this season so give me under on the 29 and a half points plus assist prop tonight for Jamal Murray at 29 and a half my favorite bet on tonight's NBA board is actually in this Hornets Spurs game believe it or not Uh, This four and a half point spread here for Charlotte, when I saw it at first glance, I thought, ooh, perhaps uh, the Spurs could be intriguing. I know these teams just played. The Spurs beat them down. Uh, Victor Webinyama was excellent in the basketball game. No Wemby tonight. No Wemby in this line, only four and a half. I thought that was suspicious. I think Charlotte is probably not getting enough respect. When Charlotte went to San Antonio, that was a two and a half point spread in a game that Wemby played. So to see four and a half flipping it back to Charlotte, I didn't think that was too far gone. I don't think Wemby's factored in enough. But going through the five times this team has played without Victor Webinyama, they've only covered the first half once so far. And a lot of times they've been getting routed. If you look, the Bulls had them uh, down eight. Portland was up 15 at half, laying four and a half. Very similar spot. Mavs were up six. Bucks were up 13 and a half. They didn't cover the full game, but were up 13 and a half, which was covering. And the Pels, the only non cover, did still lead at half by two. They were laying about 11 and a half in the game. So they weren't covering a first half line that was probably five and a half, six, probably, maybe even six and a half. But again, we're still up by this margin. LaMelo Ball back in this lineup. LaMelo Ball playing his first home game since returning. And, Lam- and LaMelo's last two home games were victories. One against Washington, one against Boston in overtime. So I don't think, again, this is nowhere near enough respect for me for what we're seeing here tonight. LaMelo in the lineup, no Victor Webinyama. Give me the Hornets laying two points in the first half. Give me Jonathan Murray over eight and a half assists. This could have been a best bet. I, I hesitated only because it was expensive at minus 130. The number has climbed quite substantially since. Let me see if I can find the lowest number uh, tonight here, uh, uh, juice-wise, on this DeJounta Murray prop. It looks like minus 152. There are some 7.5s. You, you could play 7.5s. So this season, DeJounta's played two games without Trey Young. He's had 10 assists and 9 assists. The rebounds haven't changed much. He had one really good scoring game against Detroit. Another not so much. He only scored 20 points uh, in the matchup. I think maybe get better against Brooklyn. Don't admittedly remember right off the top of my head. But if you go back to last season, which brings in a seven additional game sample size, DeJounta Murray has had seven plus assists in eight out of nine games without Trey Young as a member of the Atlanta Hawks. Average is 8.6. So this number being seven and a half at minus 120 wouldn't have even been that much of a mistake considering what we've seen DeJounta Murray do in the absence of Trey Young as a member of the Atlanta Hawks. So again, if you want to play this seven and a half at plus, you can play it. If you don't mind laying juice, you should be able to get over six and a half. Trey this year, two games against Miami, 11 assists and 13 assists. I think you're getting some value on a double-double for DeJounta Murray. Uh, Did see a plus 425 uh, available out there. Something to keep your eyes on. I think that number uh, could be worthwhile. So, uh, again, keep your tabs uh, on that number there. Uh, Let's also continue to go through tonight's NBA slate uh, because we've got a Bradley Beal prop that I think is worth it. Over one and a half made threes. Beal's last three games, eight for 10, four for six, and then last time out, 0 for four. The New Orleans Pelicans allow the most three-point attempts in basketball at 39.2. Now, Phoenix does not take an incredibly high volume, only 31.7 on the season, but could we meet in the middle on those numbers there potentially? Get 34, 35 attempts tonight there, and if those extra attempts come to Bradley Beal, that would be perfect. I'll take my chances on four attempts, but if I can get six plus, which he had did in two games prior to last, four and one on the season uh, when he takes at least six threes going over one and a half made. So I like Bradley Beal tonight over the one and a half made threes. And then I mentioned this Blazers game tonight against the Pacers. So the line right now is up to eight and a half. There are a lot of moving pieces with this game. Halliburton in Pascal debut. The more surprising information might have been the downgrade to questionable on the on Anthony Simons. 
which would be important. Anthony Simons was brilliant in the fourth quarter against the Brooklyn Nets uh, and hit a basically buzzer-beating shot to win that game. So this line earlier in the day, I saw five uh, and a half on Indiana, but I'm actually interested in backing the Blazers on this number. Uh, if you take a look here, yeah, and this line opened up much, much shorter uh, when they didn't think that there was going to be kind of all th this full force here tonight for the Pacers. The Pacers are 1-6 against the spread without rest this season. 1-6. The caveat is Pascal didn't play last night, nor did Tyrese Halliburton. They were playing Sacramento. So how applicable still would that be? But Halliburton's obviously playing his first game since early January, and Pascal's playing in a new situation. I am going to be letting this number settle. This is a game that's tipping uh, late night at 10 o'clock. What does the Simons news do to this number? Uh, all of that matters for me, but the early look for me would actually be getting Portland plus all of these points here uh, tonight. But we'll see how that injury report uh, continues to look. Mark Zinos up next year on Game Time Decisions. We'll see if he has any NBA action uh, or maybe college basketball. And then also put the eye on the division around next. as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed, Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going yeah. to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. They were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA. And they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories, but Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
Live on Sports Grid with you here. It is a Friday night. I'm Kevin Walsh, joined uh, by Mark Zeno. Mark, last time I spoke to you, I believe it was last Friday, uh, and I on a whim was curious if you were on the NBA, and you said it was a very ugly night uh, of NBA action. I'm curious, uh, are you running back uh, an NBA card uh, that is going to be able to resemble as ugly as last week's? Yeah, uh, actually, I am. Um, so, on Game Time Decisions on Wednesday night with Joe Ranieri, I gave out an ugly play, a hold-your-nose stinker, don't watch it, just check the score in the morning, as I backed the Portland Trailblazers getting seven points against the Brooklyn Nets, and uh, they won outright. I am going equally as ugly tonight, if you could believe it, uh, and I'm backing the Brooklyn Nets tonight against the L.A. Lakers, who are now getting seven points. Like, the Nets have been god-awful as of late, Kevin. Brooklyn is 3-14 and 14 straight up, 2-14-1 and one against the number in their last 17 games. Uh, they are getting just outplayed on both ends of the floor. The Lakers have covered back-to-back home games but failed to cover six of their last seven before then. This just feels, though, like too many points. The Lakers have only been more than a six-point favorite or at least seven-point favorite and above just three times this year. And that they, they've all been at home. So what does that tell you about the, the, the number that they're laying tonight? I know the Nets have been playing bad, but are, are, are the Lakers that much better? Are they seven points better than any teams other than, like, you know, let's say Washington, uh, the, the San Antonio, Detroit? The Nets aren't that bad. They can be competitive in this spot here. And if you really can't get to the Nets, the under also feels mm-hmm. like the correlated play. Yeah, I think – what what really stands out to me, you talk about what the number was in Portland, right? It's, are the Lakers, that would suggest they're what, Mark? 14 points better than the Blazers? The Lakers aren't 14 points better than anybody. Which, so, it, and again, I have no issue with the play. It does suggest, though, that that loss to Portland, the books were like, okay, we actually don't realize how awful the Nets are. The, the, yeah, and the Nets are playing horrendous basketball. Right. Now, I'm not laying, I would never lay seven and a half with the Lakers, but... That's why I say the, the under is maybe a more comfortable correlated total here as the Lakers defense is 11th right. in, in defensive efficiency. So you could go that route. Mm-hmm. They won't have to score that much to beat the Nets. Uh, but again, the under also typically correlates to the dogs. So I, I look at this game and I'm with you. Like, it, it, I would never lay seven with the Lakers. And I think odds makers are finally starting to catch on mm-hmm. and say, damn, Brooklyn is really bad. Like, they're giving up 120 points per 100 possessions. They just, they, they are not playing a good brand of basketball right now. We saw that with, with Portland, and now I think there might be too much of an overreaction in the other direction. And let me just ask you quickly, Mark. Obviously, I know when it comes to you following the SEC, it's not just college football, it's college basketball as well. We'll get to the divisional round in a moment. But I've quite enjoyed watching the SEC uh, this season, currently in conference, two unbeaten teams, Auburn, And Alabama, and Alabama had all these big struggles out of conference. So far right now with, I think it's four teams ranked by the AP Top 25, who in the SEC has really been earning your respect early season? You know, there's a a bunch of different teams out there. I mean, obviously still I think you have to look uh, at Kentucky and Florida as legit contenders. Tennessee obviously with their defense. But we're going to find out how good Alabama really is tomorrow when they have to go to Tennessee and play a game against the Volunteers where, you know, the Alabama that we saw last year, not the same Alabama team this year, but again, if they can mm-hmm. go into Rock Top and make this thing competitive here, we know that they can score. Can they defend enough against Tennessee? Real styles make fights kind of game. Uh, I still think Alabama is a team to contend with. Auburn obviously at the top. Ole Miss may be coming back down to earth here, Kevin. Uh, after their loss to LSU, uh, their numbers weren't sustainable. They can shoot the hell out of the basketball, though. But they can continue that all season long. Guess what? Um, they, they, they could make some noise. And I'll give you one more quick nod to Georgia's been a little bit surprising. I don't think they're going to hang on as we get deeper into conference play. They may end up just being, yeah. a, you know, a 10-8 and 8 kind of team in conference play when it's all said and done, as opposed to a, you know, uh, a 12 and 6 kind of team that really, you know, is uh, higher in the pack. But they've played really good this year. You can't, you can't knock the dogs with the dog. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about the weekend, and, and it begins in the divisional round with two nine-and-a-half-point favorites, Baltimore laying nine-and-a-half to Houston, and then the Niners laying nine-and-a-half to Green Bay. On that Saturday slate, Mark, do you have a strong side right now? 
Yeah, let's look at the first game between Baltimore and Houston. Uh, I can't lay nine with a nine and a half with the Ravens. And I don't think the Texans are as good as what we saw last week. I think last week was more of an indictment on the Browns. But let's cut this up this way, Kevin. I'm not only going to back the Ravens in the first quarter. I'm going to back them in the first half as well. Do you realize that the Houston Texans on the road this year have scored two offensive touchdowns in the first quarter all year and a total of 17 points in the first quarter all season? And wow. they're going to go to Baltimore and score early against this team? I don't think so. Now, a lot can be made of the Texans. Oh, they only have given up 5.8 points in the first half on the road. Have you seen the level of opponents the Texans have played on the road this year? They played four bottom five defenses in the Titans, the Jets, the Falcons, and uh, I want to say, who am I forgetting here? Oh, the Panthers, right? Like, these are the teams that they've played on the road. So, yeah, it stands to reason that their defensive numbers look good because they played four of the worst five scoring offenses in the NFL. The defense is mm-hmm. not that good. Their pass defense is going to struggle. The Ravens should be able to take advantage. I'll lay the six and a half in the first half. I'll lay the three in the first quarter. Uh, and I know, I, I don't you know where it's landed as much this season, but for a while in Lamar's career, Mark, untouchable against first half numbers always able to get out to those big leads and sometimes they weren't able to kind of wrap around how much are you buying into i mean i guess it's, they're the second favorite they're the number one seed in the conference i shouldn't put phrase it like that are, are you a believer in this ravens team as far as the super bowl goes because i do think some people are trying to pick them off because years prior they failed in this exact spot number one seed with a bye afc south team comes in and knocks them out Devin, I say it all year long during the playoffs every year. Don't bet narratives. Just don't. Like, look at the mm-hmm. numbers. Look at what's in front of you. Look at the teams and and do your best handicap off of that. If I was going to bet the Texans based off the fact, well, Lamar has been bad in the playoffs. <laughs> He's never played this Houston Texans team in the playoffs. So, I don't know. Like, it'd be one thing if he had struggled against a similar opponent over and over again. Like, when the Ravens and Patriots met for like three or four years or the Ravens and Steelers met for three or four years in the playoffs, and you see common coaches, common quarterbacks, common you know defensive ends and, and safeties, things of that nature. I think there's a correlation you can make. But Lamar Jackson has never played the Texans or anybody on right. the Texans in the playoffs. So why would I bring this narrative into it? I have to look at the Ravens team as is. I have to look at a C.J. Stroud who's one of the worst quarterbacks in the league under pressure and a Ravens team that gets more sacks than anybody in the NFL and look at it and say, yeah, I think the Ravens can cover this number, but I'm just not going to bet a number this big with a total this low. I mean, the only way the, hmm. you're you're eliminating the the oh, the under from happening by saying, you know, the Ravens have to cover ten points essentially. That means their defense can only give up ten or thirteen for this to stay under, right? Because they got to go twenty three right. to thirteen, and, and and even at you know you have, that's where it has to be to stay under this total. Because if the Ravens get to twenty seven, mm-hmm. guess what? We're pushing forty, and you're, you're going to have a problem staying under. So I say all that to say, too big of a number for me to back the Ravens here with this low of a total. Yeah, let me. Uh... Let me see. Let me put this net, that uh, that to the test, though. Yeah, I'll stay in the AFC because Bills Chiefs, Mark. It, it <laughs> there's not a lot of analysis out there. I feel like that doesn't involve narratives. Mahomes is a this season. The whole thing is a narrative, right? Either you believe in him, or even though they won the Super Bowl without Tyree Kill, Tyree Kill not being there is the reason they can't win a game. What are you feeling right now with the Kansas City and Buffalo matchup on Sunday? I'm rooting hardcore for Buffalo. Emotionally, I'm invested in Buffalo. Why? Because I have a ticket on Buffalo after they went 6-6 six and six to win the AFC at 9-1. to one. So uh, I need them to be in the championship game because I also have a ticket on the Ravens to win the Super Bowl at 9-1. to one. <laughs> So I'm hoping Buffalo and Baltimore get through so I can be in a very advantageous head situation. But that all said, look, I just think Buffalo is a better team. I've always thought Buffalo is the better team. Kansas City kicked four field goals last week against a very lackluster Dolphins defense. Did the weather have something to do with that? Maybe. But if they're settling for field goals against this Buffalo team, they're dead in the water. Uh, really, this whole game for me, I'm not worried about – I don't buy into the narrative about Patrick Holmes in his first road game. Like, I, I don't care. This team has won too many playoff games. They've been in too many big moments for me to actually go, well, they might choke on the road. They might they might clam up. Like, come on. It's Andy Reid and Patrick Holmes. This is a very good team that you have to respect no matter where they play the game. That said, again, it's going to be a different environment for them if they're not used to playing in. If Josh Allen can avoid the backbreaking turnover later in a game, I think he can recover from one earlier in the game. I'm not worried about that. But if he can avoid that mm-hmm. backbreaking turnover, if it's going to be close, 
I think that they're going to be fine. I would tell you this. I think Buffalo can get out to an early lead here. Maybe a Buffalo money line in the first half, and the Chiefs will claw their way back into it. Let's see how the I, I would say this much about the Chiefs on the road. Let's see how they weather the storm of the first couple of drives in the weather, in the elements, in that environment with Buffalo fans going bonkers every time that they're on offense. Yeah. Like that may be something that they have to figure out for a quarter and a half before they actually starts clicking for them. Buffalo in the first half. I mean, look, I took Buffalo money line, but I would endorse Buffalo in the first half and on the money line as well. One of the things though that worries me and what you, I have, you know, Bill's preseason stuff. So nowhere, like I have nine to one to win the Super Bowl, right? Nowhere near as juicy as, as the ticket you have. But is even in a positive Bills breakdown, which I don't disagree with, the acknowledgement that Josh Allen is almost assuredly going to throw an interception is so unfortunate. But he threw one last week, and he's not yeah. gone one game this year, Mark, without back-to-back picks. Like, it's minus 130, minus 120 for him to throw one this weekend. It would be surprising if he got out of here without not throwing one. Can they overcome it, like you said, uh, is a big question. Mark, we appreciate it. Go ahead, quick. No, Josh has played his best games against the Bills. He always plays I mean, against the Chiefs, rather. Yeah. He's always played his yep. best games against the Chiefs. So, there's that. He has. He has. And look, I'm, I'm rooting it on uh, right with you there. Mark, we appreciate it, as always. Excellent stuff. Best of luck this weekend. Big games in the divisional round. Sports Grid's coverage uh, will be with you throughout and the lead-up to all of those football games. Up next, though, Coach James Young, as we get set for tonight's NBA and college slates. as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. best friends like they they like siakam's best friend on the team was chris boucher chris boucher's best friend on the team was pascal siakam they're not american right so like they like they're there's different cliques in the nba and they were very very tight so chris boucher i got rattled like seeing chris boucher and thinking about the memories but raptors responded sports rage late night only on sports grid one that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. 
I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Back on Sports Grid, Coach James Young here with us on a Friday night. Uh, JY, lot to get to in the association. How you feeling? Man, it's, it's good to be on with you, brother. It's a happy Friday night, everyone. Shout out to the meteorologists. Hopefully we get better mix than what's going on with the weather out here. So, Seven inches, I think we got about two. Good to be on with you, brother. <laughs> uh, all right, JY, let's start here. Uh, we've got a huge game uh, between the Nuggets and the Celtics. Uh, Seven-point line in favor of Boston. Total uh, about 233 and a half, we'll call it. Split the difference. How are you betting this game tonight? I'm going to go at Chris Stapps, uh, Porzingis. And I got at 16 and a half. It has risen to 18 and a half, so shop around accordingly. Uh, my 16 and a half over points went over seven in the last 11. My thing is this. If you look at a guy like Nikola Jokic, and if you look at what happened uh, when Philadelphia played, uh, Boston. Um, you know, you're not so familiar if you played Denver. You saw that they struggle against guys that can stretch the floor. You don't remember that? Um, and I think Porzingis is the type of big that can give Joker trouble if he guards. So, and he's not a guard. Who else is he going to guard? He ain't going to guard. He him, right? So, when you look at this matchup, Joker's going to guard Porzingis. Porzingis is going outside. And I think he shreds him. I absolutely strike him. You're right about this Denver team. They have not played well on the road, particularly against uh, against the top point competition. And I think, you know, while I'm not going to lay the seven, I wouldn't be shocked if you jumped on it because I think this is a 10 point win. But I'm going to go with the Zinger. Chris is putting the Zenny snap. I got to go either way. Zinger will go busy tonight against so uh, I, I love the breakdown, Coach. I think Porzingis is one of those things when we get into these type of games, it really stands out. I want to just do the big picture on this game for a moment if we can. I'll make sure we get any plays that will uh, – J.Y. will be back with us at about 7.20. So any plays that start, I probably will get there. But I want to give this game some time. Uh, turn it back, all right? Just You could upload the BATR graphics to this one here. This is a finals preview, right? This is the favorite in the East. And it's the favorite in the West. And the line is seven. There's reason to believe that if we put Boston in Denver fully healthy, the game is pick. Boston might be laying, right? So I can't bet the Celtics to win the title at plus 290 because there's nothing that is going to really happen to get that number that much shorter, right? Like what can happen from now until the playoffs start? Milwaukee or Denver or the Lakers make an earth-shattering trade, Clippers, whatever it might be, Boston number comes back, Philly, right? They have a lot of assets. A Celtic gets hurt. There's no po- – Boston doesn't have a major trade coming to shift them down to plus 125, right? KD is not requesting out of Phoenix and landing on the Celtics. But this is an early signal, Coach, that it is going to be difficult to find value to bet on Boston – when the playoffs begin. That's kind of my takeaway from this line. Yeah, I, I think so. So I think if you, if you, the better way to look at it is this. Until something changes, uh, meaning Porzingis gets hurt, so on and so forth, Boston should come out of the game. So the question is, is it better to go plus 290 for a Boston World championship or to look at, try to predict the finals matchup, right? So if you mm. went Boston-Denver, you're at five and a half to one. You know, you can't even know if you're crazy. The reason I like the Clippers. Boston Clippers, 11 to one. So if you're looking at Boston to win the title, maybe the better way right now is to try and find the matchup that they're going to play in the finals. Just in case Boston does belly up. Kevin King, Listen, they were up two games to one. Game four, and they just went absolutely did some of the dumbest stuff I've seen in the last five minutes. And they had the Warriors dead to right. It was done. Okay. And they turned around and lose yeah. the straight. So that's an interesting way that you may want to look at it. Look at the finals matchup. 
Well, I like that. I like that idea, right? You can get a lot of, you know, that's when you start. People have been doing that with the Niners on the NFL side, right? They've been taking the Niners and they've just been pairing it with different AFC variants, and it makes sense. Here's the problem with Boston, though, is every time they've been eliminated for the last half decade, Celtics fans have been trying to make this not true, even though you can't argue fact. Boston has been the favorite. Against Golden State, they were favored. They won the first game in Golden State. Against Miami, every single time, they've been the favorite. They were the, hell, they were the favorite against those LeBron teams that were beating them. I'm not, I'm not talking about, well, I'm not even talking about the big three. I'm talking about the Tatum group when they had LeBron in Boston game seven with Jeff Green at his back and LeBron played the full 48. They were favored then. So we've seen Boston get knocked off as a favorite. It is remarkable, though, Coach. I mean, 20-0 and 0 at home. Their updated win total is 62 and a half. I mean, they are going to have home court throughout the postseason. And this is why people say now or never when they talk about the Celtics. It is not that they need to blow up and rearrange the entire team again this offseason. If they don't make the finals, Missoula will be fired. But Missoula could make the finals and he'll come back. It's not, it's that everything is just jumping off the page as Boston is on their own tier. And the finals market reflects it. And the game lines reflect it, JY. And if it doesn't come true, you're going to be looking around like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, the, it's a little Dallas Cowboys. Dallas this year was 8-0 at home. And the only home team that lost in the wild card round. Like, you look at this Boston suck, JY. And, man, it, I mean, it, it feels, if it doesn't happen this year, I don't know. Well, I agree with you. I think, you know, what Kevin's point is, is, you know, it's, you know, so many years in a big spot. When is Tatum going to give me that four for 16? Folks, we all know it's coming at some point. At what point does Father, Father Time catch up to Al Horford? You know, at what point do we look at uh, a situation, uh, you know, like can Jalen Brown go to his left, which he never goes to his left. So there are things that is going on with Boston that can give you – reason to pause that can they get to the finish line and you're right Missoula will get the fall but at some point you got to look at the two superstars that are there and say one of these got to go now we all know if it's one or the other it's going to be better Tatum is going to be a Celtic for life let's just line this up right now he should be right so I just think it's interesting here with Boston but I still think, what? and I think you make a good point, real quick. I, I think Philadelphia is a team you need to watch out for in the East, and we'll get to their game, obviously, because I think a trade's coming. If they can get a 3 and D guy, and I'm telling you, he just got traded, right? I think Bruce Brown on Philadelphia would be fantastic. Three-point guy, a little point forward, rugged defensively, tough guy, a younger, better Offensive version of PJ Tucker. I think it could be something that could work in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, look, I think Philly. Philly's twenty three and six this year when Embiid plays. Eight and one on the road. I, I but you know, I you know, I'm a preseason Sixers guy, right? But the thing, the question on Philly is to I don't know if it's the same as Boston. Joel Embiid right now looks like an all time. You know what Embiid is doing? Anyone out there that is stupid enough to ask whether or not Shaq would exist in this era, he's letting all those people know that it's a dumb question, okay? Shaq would be fine. <laughs> Shaq would be fine. John Beat is averaging, thir- what, 35, 10, and 6 right now? I mean, it's ridiculous. And the only hesitation is when we get to the playoffs, can that continue? And I'll tell you this, Coach, and I know you're going to break down Embiid in a moment. I didn't Embiid break down myself today. I, I was curious about his numbers against Orlando because I, I was looking at the top seven defenses in basketball, right? And Because Boston's one of them and how Denver matches up. So Embiid this year against the top seven defenses in the NBA, if you look, gave OKC 35, Houston 41, Cleveland 32, Minnesota 51. It's, it, right? it's, all, it's all perfect. The only issue is the two games against Boston, 27 and 20. So is Boston his kryptonite? But, and I know this is, I'm doing a lot here, but 
the thing is, someone might take care of Boston for Embiid. And he ought to give Milwaukee business in a series. He will get oh, oh, oh. business <laughs> in a series. <laughs> he will give them <laughs> business. <laughs> I say, yeah, no, 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 no. Tell 34 to come get this work. I say, don't worry about Brooke. Don't worry about Bobby Portis. You tell 34 to come get this work. He, he was all upset that Budenholzer wouldn't let him guard the best player. Come on. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of head fakes. Uh, give me the Embiid breakdown, though, against Orlando. And listen, Joel Embiid over 32 and a half, 33 and a half shot for round, over 11 out of his last 15 games. The top two ways that JoJo scores, right? He's got the advantage over a team like Orlando. So when you look at JoJo, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you this, folks. Kevin, this has JoJo got, I, I see 40 tonight. I really do. I see a 40 piece out of JoJo Embiid because if you think about it, where where is the match good defensively and on the perimeter? You think with this thing and Wendell Carter Jr. is stopping him? Like, no, 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 no. This is why Zion keeps shrinking for everything. JoJo goes off and because JoJo goes off, the Sixers win against a magic team that's lost four of his last five and they are starting to slide back. Philly goes on the road with a huge win and JoJo goes nuclear. Uh, so, and, and you're trusting Philly to cover the number then on the road here against the Magic? Yeah, I, I am. I think I think Philadelphia's playing really well. And I think Orlando's come back to the back. Their last win that they had Orlando was that win at New York, in which you know Julius Randle went back to the Julius Randle and me and, and Frizo to see half of the lot. That was the sole reason why we want him out of New York, and no Jalen Brunson, and they won by four. So you're you're gonna get JoJo and B who now is looking at this 30 and 10 streak and looking at whoever it is, Wilt, or whoever has the high, most consecutive. And no. he's, he's a historian. He's looking at 30 and 10 every night. So I think he goes off tonight. Oh, and hey. he covers the spread. Um, I'm only doing this because it costs me. The 30 and 10 streak is over. The 30-point streak is still alive. But the 30 and 10 streak is over. Because there was a nice oh, little plus 250 boost. On uh, on him and Jokic to have 25 and 8, and Embiid had 7 rebounds. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't have to look that we'll start up. It again. I, I, we'll start it again. He might, but it is, oh, how does that, how does he get 8 rebounds? I don't even understand how it's possible. It's just, that's, that's see, that, that, see that, you, you didn't even do it on purpose, but that really upset me. That upset me. All right, give me the heat breakdown. No, I need a minute. No, I need a minute. What, what do you think about the heat tonight? I need a minute. The, the, Hawks I'm all upset lost, now. the Hawks have lost four in the last five. They're a hot mess. DeJounte Murray's on the block. Wait, is he going to the Lakers? Is he going to the Knicks? It's, it's, it's all the rest of DeJounte Murray. They're bottom five in defensive rating. Everybody's playing for Miami. And if you look at it, the Heat have won both games this year by eight and by oh. nine and only leading six and a half. Like, that seems odd to me. I think this team in, in, in Atlanta is going absolutely nowhere. Give me the Heat. They win by 10 plus. I might have to keep JY. Look at this. I don't know how he tricked me. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to keep him. I, there's college that we have to get to. That tips at seven. This guy just got himself booked for a third segment. That's unbelievable. I might give it out myself. Hey. I don't know. Look at him. Look, nah. Oh, this is unexist. Uh, yeah. That name you keep referencing. A lot of trouble all of a sudden. We'll be right back here on Sports Grid. As the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half. Outright. Plus 385. Outright. We smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, 
this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. They were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA. And they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories, but Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Game Time Decisions. Kevin Walsh is where I like to give you uh, a best bet. And then, I mean, this guy, JY, just, he, he's in charge. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I want to keep Coach here because he's got two picks in the Mac. And any respect for the Mac, I have to, I have to appreciate. And no, not Maction with four teams from Michigan. No, the real Mac with two A's. Talk to me, JY. What do you want in the Mac tonight? Mac Daddy will make you jump, jump for you guys to know about Chris Cross. Know, that's all right. Uh, first play, I'm going to go with Quinnipiac minus the points versus Sienna. Quinnipiac team, if you look at Ken Baum's adjusted ratings, one team is 2A and uh, Quinnipiac, Sienna 349th. The key is the fact of, of Quinnipiac's D is pretty good. Sienna leaks in regards to their defense. Give me Quinnipiac minus a six. Uh, and then I'm going to go under here, St. Peter's Fairfield. This is more about a, a St. Peter's team that is extremely great on the defensive end, right? This, their defensive efficiency, I think, is top 20 or 30 in the nation. Then you look at their offense, and they're bottom, like, 60 in the nation. And then they play one of the slowest paces in the nation. So they're going to slow the game down. And I especially like doing this, Kevin, when you have a team on the road. They do what they mm. do, especially on the road. They slow the game down. I know it looks like a low total. It is, and that's because of St. Peter's. Game goes under 135 and a half. Shout out, JY, double Mac. First of all, on Ken Palm, best team in the Mac right now. Go Gales, baby. Uh-oh. Still top ranked team. Still oh, top, Patino's still there? top ranked team. Patino's still there? <sighs> this guy. All right, get him off. Get him off. Get him off. Get him off. Oh, this guy, Zach Levine, just got injured again. All right, good. JY will be back at 725. Uh, my favorite bet in the NBA tonight is you get him off. This is not the JY show. Hornets laying two. Alt it now. Now I'm losing my mind. Laying two in the first half. They're one in, the Spurs are one and four against the spread in the first half without Victor Webinyama. No Wemby tonight. LaMelo Ball. Last time we saw him at home, he was winning basketball games, baby. He does it tonight in the first half at least up by a dozen. We'll be back in less than a minute. I will be back. I me.
Welcome back in. Sports Grid is live on a Friday night. I'm Kevin Walsh. This is Game Time Decisions. We're going to have Coach James Young back here uh, at 725. Some news uh, in the NBA and college to cover, including the rest of his card tonight. Joe Lisi will be here at 740 uh, as we get set for a big weekend of NFL action. But a big game tonight in the NBA. Boston, Denver, the Celtics host the Nuggets, laying seven. Here's a Davis Maddox, same game parlay for tonight's game. All right, guys, we had a winner last night in the NBA for our same game parlay over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. So we are going to return to the NBA again tonight. We've got a very, very marquee game with the Denver Nuggets traveling to play at the Boston Celtics. The Celtics are undefeated at home this season, which I think is why this line is so large. We have the Denver Nuggets as six and a half point dogs. We are going to begin by underdog nuggets on the road absolutely i grant that the celtics have probably been the best team in the nba this season but the denver nuggets are not far behind and uh, we also know that they tend to get up for spots like this and they should be smarting from that loss to the 76ers and Joel Embiid earlier in the weeks who are beginning by taking the Nuggets plus six and a half. We are also going to take the over on 234 and a half. The Celtics are probably the second best defense in the NBA. So I think a loss or allowing the Nuggets to cover is going to correlate well with an over or a poor defensive performance. Of course, we are going to take Nicole Jokic to record 20 or more points in this game. That is just sort of a lock every time that you are betting on the Nuggets. And then I think the swing man for this game is going to be Michael Porter Jr. and his ability to generate three-pointers. So we are going to add Michael Porter Jr. to make three or more three-pointers in this game. That same game parlay is going to give us plus 448 odds on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Denver Nuggets plus six. Over 234 and a half, Nikola Jokic to score 20 or more points, and Michael Porter Jr. to make three or more three-pointers in this game. Good luck tonight, everybody. All right, great stuff there from Davis. Our radio audience is here on a Friday night. Sirius XM Channel 159, it's Game Time Decisions. I'm Kevin Walsh. want to start off uh, here talking about the quarterbacks for this weekend and what some of the props uh, are jumping out early again tomorrow pro football today is live at 10 a.m all right make sure you're there appropriate start time 10 a.m myself joe lisi and donnie right side will be live we begin with the biggest quarterback battle once again josh allen and patrick mahomes and you line up the props and one number stands out to me amongst the rest josh allen 227 and a half passing yards if you look that is much lower than a typical josh allen number and i've been trying to figure out how we got here is it that josh didn't have a huge passing game last week against pittsburgh i don't really think that makes that much sense is it because of Tua's struggles in the cold against Kansas City, that's questionable. I know Josh didn't have a marvelous game early season against the Chiefs, but Josh Allen still has all of his abilities. And if by chance this script flips and the Bills are trailing, Josh can get through this number. Maybe it's to do with an injured Stephon Diggs and an already confirmed out Gabriel Davis. The Bills are working up against it as far as their wide receiver room goes heading into this game. You can find Josh Allen with the longest odds to lead this divisional round this just this weekend. Four games, eight quarterbacks, longest odds, 10 to 1. Actually, he's tied longest odds with Lamar. That is not what we are accustomed to seeing Josh Allen sit. This almost then informs you need some more James Cook. His prop against Pittsburgh, 64 and a half, 61 and a half this week. I thought that was an interesting number and something for us to keep our eye on. We'll stay in the AFC here with Lamar Jackson and C.J. Stroud. One thing to note is the one-and-a-half passing touchdown market for these quarterbacks, both plus money, both quite interesting. Lamar, I feel, as this season was buttoning up, obviously the final performance for him was against Miami with five passing touchdowns. We saw the air be a bit more reliant. Lamar Jackson is actually booked as the shortest uh, favorite at plus 100 to score a touchdown in this game. That is horrendous value. If it wins, sure, good for you. His five on the season, including, I believe, two, at least one multi-rushing touchdown game, 
That is a, a better ticket that is maybe just the one, but still, it has not been cashing. Gus Edwards should definitively have shorter odds for a rushing touchdown or for a touchdown than Lamar Jackson. That's why his one and a half is interesting. CJ's one and a half is plus 150 range, but a big reason for that is where the team total is sitting on the Houston Texans. At last look, 16 and a half. The expectation here with the weathered and the Ravens defense is this, this game is going to lean under and the Texans offense specifically is going to struggle. Lamar's 50 and a half rushing yards, the highest of any quarterback uh, on this slate. Certainly no surprise. I am on his postseason long rushing under. It's but it's three games. It's 117 and a half. We'll see how that goes to go to the NFC. Brock Purdy, Jordan Love. If you take a look at these numbers, now juice is always varying, of course, but there are a lot of similarities here. Now, the difference probably is Brock is booked in this position with stronger numbers, despite the fact that they're a nine and a half point favorite, and his running back is 15 or so yards taller from an ASP than what you're seeing out of Aaron Jones. So the total offense for the Niners is supposed to be much better, but I think to some degree right you can see these numbers and say okay that's why we see the expectation but I actually would like to use this to make the point on the next game which is the Lions and the Bucks. again 263 and a half for Brock Purdy 246 and a half for Jordan Love one and a half passing touchdowns for each guy when you go to Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff and actually we talked to Mark Zeno during the break and he said he loves Baker over his passing yards well 260 and a half it's more than what we got from Jordan Love 277 and a half Jared Goff that's higher than the Brock Purdy side of things. Now, I understand that maybe the running back rooms, Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones, probably are booked more favorably than Rashad White and the Montgomery Gibbs split. But again, if you use props to almost inform you in other areas, maybe Lions Buck should have the highest total of the weekend. It doesn't at 48 and a half. And I'm not, you know, telling tales out of school. At least he's been very open about this. He loves the total over in this football game. And I see, uh, you know, Something like this, when you see it positioned in a different light, it makes sense, and it starts to become a bit more understanding. One thing I'll say on Goff, he is booked as the favorite to lead the postseason in passing yards. The benefit for Goff is obviously the fact that he is supposed to be winning his game. If you look, guys that played last week and are supposed to win, it's Goff and it's Josh Allen. Well, Josh only threw for about 200 last week. And we mentioned his number is just 227 and a half. So if Goff can create 100 yards of separation on Josh Allen and would obviously have played three games with a win, Niners and Bill and Ravens cap out at three games. It's why you're seeing Goff book so strong, but it also does correlate to the Amon Ra St. Brown props. We'll talk more postseason player props next year on Sports Grid. Looked like he's been playing in the league for a decade as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid.
they were best friends. Like they, they like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Back here on Sports Grid, Kevin Walsh with you. It is a Friday night. Coach James Young will be in the mix. Hornets up three nothing. Just gotta hold it. Just gotta hold it until a half now. Five whoa! Five nothing. Could be a blowout. Could be a blowout. We'll see uh, what we got tonight on Charlotte minus the two in the first half. Uh, that game's tipped as uh, has Philly Orlando. You know, one thing I didn't get a chance to mention to you guys was the Embiid movement off of MVP. I said something. Now, can I back it up? What did I I said going into that game, the dream is Embiid goes off in a win. They drop his odds. Back comes Jokic. Back comes SGA. You get great value. Now, SGA didn't necessarily come back, but Jokic did. Embiid crashed down from 8-1 to to plus 260. The thing is where I say, can I actually, you know, back myself? And that Embiid performance, he (sighs) probably... He's going to win this award if he can stay healthy, right? It's can he actually play 65 games? He's already missed a ton. What would be interesting is, though, because obviously Embiid is well aware, everybody's aware, does Embiid play in spots from now until season's end in an attempt to win the award where he plays 20 minutes? Could we get a Cal Ripken? Ah, that's maybe not the fair comparison. But is there a world where Embiid checks in, tips the ball, and makes sure he meets the game requirements? But if, if that's what we get to, are they going to give the award to Embiid? It's very interesting. So that's why you got the move that you were, or I said would be ideal, but it, the Embiid performance was so good and the conversation around him is so positive, it does make it a little bit difficult at the moment because you're still not getting this amazing number on Jokic at plus 240. And I don't think Denver has been incredible. They've not. They haven't been incredible this year to make him a lock. SGA's numbers have been good. We've seen SGA arguments. So at 3-1, to one, you can say, okay, I'm betting both, right? As a Embiid isn't winning this award type of bet, could Luka crash in? If the Mavs and Kyrie stay healthy enough, is there room for a Giannis conversation? And then the, because Tatum is 29 to 1, right? Way off the tier. But then it's 50 to 1 Ann Edwards, 75 to 1 Durant. So you can see how these things are tiered. The thing on Tatum, though, and we're going to go into the Boston game in a minute, is if this team wins, they're on, they're on, I think, they're, they're on a great pace. I mean, there's a prop up right now for Boston to, Go unbeaten at home. Yeah, it's 55 to 1. I mean, it's a crazy proposition, but, you know, if they do that, if this team wins 68, 69 games, if that's possible, 
is there a world where Tatum then we start getting best player, best team Tatum stuff? Right? Like, if I actually was, I almost would rather touch the Tatum number right now at 29 to 1 and see if Boston's record could carry you through deeper into the conversation. So I, I think it, it's really interesting. I am on the game tonight between Boston uh, and Denver. Uh, I've talked about it a couple of times, but top defenses have beaten up on the Nuggets. They've been booked in as a favorite in 11 of those 12 games. They've lost 10 of the 12. They've only covered once uh, in this spot. Now, they are, as I've said, though, consistently, this is by far the biggest number that Denver has caught in this spot with Jokic, with Murray. So I understand why people are gravitating towards Denver. Not for me, but I am going to play Jamal Murray under 29.5 points plus assists. Eight games against top seven defenses, eight no to the under for Jamal Murray in that spot. I think it absolutely works favorably. Uh, the other NBA picks I have, DeJounte Murray over 6.5 assists, and Bradley Beal over 1.5 uh, made threes. As I said, I'm waiting to see kind of what happens with that Pacers-Blazers line sitting right now uh, between 7.5 and 8.5. And Let's quickly just talk a little bit about some postseason numbers here because there's some props that I'm interested in, okay? I've not played yet. You will know tomorrow morning on Pro Football Today – we're not, I'm not hiding them from you. It's not, I'm not even doing this as a get you to tune in. I haven't kind of finalized some things yet. So the three, so uh, FanDuel has posted up some postseason long numbers. So these are the props that I was betting before the wild card round, but they were over on DK. Uh, Mahomes over the 40 and a half rushing yards. Uh, things, you know, not, not everything went. CeeDee Lamb, unfortunately, the one and a half receiving touchdowns didn't work out. That's fine. But they're now, these are available on FanDuel for the actual kind of full postseason, I guess they wanted the guys to get to the divisional round. And there were some interesting numbers on two guys that are dogs this weekend, both Mike Evans and Aaron Jones. Mike Evans and Aaron Jones, to hit what are their current props. So let's just start with Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones needs 84 more yards to go over a listed number of 201.5. He had 118 in the opening game. He's four consecutive games of 100-plus rush yards. Can Aaron Jones get you 84 yards in one game? I don't have a lot of confidence that the Packers are actually going to go into San Francisco and win that game. So you would probably say, why are you going to bet the Aaron Jones number straight, right? Because he's 68 and a half. So why are you going to bet him from 84? You can get plus money, right? For 80-plus yards, plus 144. 90-plus yards, ballpark it, right, is plus 220. Because if they pulled off the upset, that is a winning wager. I don't even care if he has 20 yards. He'll get me 64 in the conference championship game. It would be worth it at that point. The question is do I think he can get through this number in this singular game? Aaron Jones has struggled in losses this year. That's what's been because he's but he's playing so much better. So you see, you see what I'm saying? Like that's kind of been the issue. And I'll tell you the other Aaron Jones market that's really interesting. Aaron Jones to lead the postseason in rushing touchdowns. I've talked about this market being fascinating. So I started to dive in him where I thought some of the value was sitting for the most postseason rushing touchdowns. Plus 115 Aaron Jones, 4-1 to CMC, 650 David Montgomery, 750 Josh Allen, and 9-1 to Isaiah Pacheco. You then have 10-1 to on Jameer Gibbs. Everybody else 26-1 to or longer. So Jones is at three. If he gets one this weekend, I think he's plus 100 to score this weekend, then you might have enough there to take a share of the pie because if it ends up with multiple guys at four it gets split up right if you get two guys it gets cut in half four guys you get 25 percent of the potential winnings you would still win money but you obviously wouldn't get as much right that's would be the the changing situation i have mccaffrey on a postseason long prop over two and a half rushing touchdowns so for me i'm not interested in betting his four to one I almost feel like I'm already on it. I don't need to kind of reinvest. I was, to some degree, interested in Montgomery and Gibbs. Montgomery is plus 650. Jameer Gibbs is 10 to 1. If you look over the last 10 games that the Lions have played, and these two have both been available, Gibbs has nine rushing touchdowns, and Montgomery has eight rushing touchdowns. 
So that means in a 10 game window, there's 17 rushing touchdowns, which is remarkable. The split obviously does favor Gibbs. They both scored in the opening round. They're both obviously favored to win this weekend. And while they would be a dog against San Francisco, it wouldn't be an insurmountable number. And of course, they'd be favored if Green Bay pulled off the upset. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking about four games. The issue is the box don't give up a lot of rushing touchdowns relative to the passing touchdowns. And if they play the Niners, which is what I think is the likely outcome, the Niners give up twice as many passing touchdowns as rushing touchdowns. But at plus 650 Montgomery, 10 to 1 Gibbs, those are kind of some tempting numbers out there. That's what, So these are some of the markets that are coming available uh, as the postseason uh, is continuing to grow. We're getting more and more markets, uh, which is nice to see. Uh, and we're going to continue to work through them. And coming back, though, is Coach James Young. Uh, we'll talk some uh, important news uh, in the college basketball landscape as well as the NBA next year on Sports Grid. as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smashed the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. best friends like they they like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam they're not American right so like they like they're there's different cliques in the NBA and they were very very tight so Chris Boucher I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories but Raptors responded sports rage late night only on sports grid one that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
Live right here on Sports Grid, Kevin Walsh with you. Uh, joined once again by Coach James Young. JY, I appreciate you coming back. Uh, let's put plays on the board. We'll handle the news uh, with the time that remains. Button up the college slate for me. Wisconsin, the only ranked team in action. Big Ten play against Indiana. What do you like here? I can't stand Indiana. I mean, I, I, these coaches that are like alma, like uh, alums going back to the school, you know, you can look at a team like Wisconsin. One, they're playing well at home. And number two, Indiana just, they don't do it for me. Um, you know, obviously we saw that Wisconsin should be in a bad mood after losing at Penn State. So I also look at it as a, as a bounce back spot here for a team of Wisconsin that has gone really well, 9-1 and one at home so far this year, giving up uh, only 66.6% or 66.6 points per game uh, at home. Give me the Wisconsin Badgers minus the 11 and a half. And let, let's go to Colorado State. Uh, minus for Colorado State, who got off to a, a great start uh, this year, kind of cooled off a little bit. Uh, I think they're one of their best team in their conference. I think this is a good spot for them. Lay, uh, laying a short number of four. Go ahead and give me the Rams at Colorado State, also covering minus four tonight. Um, I know you're you know you're up early, Jy. That number right now is seven seven and a half. Does yeah, that? I, I'm, I mean. That's got to that change doesn't, things. That doesn't change no? it. That doesn't change it. Yeah, because I, I get my stuff in early, so sometimes my lines are a little bit off. But I, I still like Colorado State. If you look at a team like UNLV, uh, you know, obviously 9-7, not the UNLV team that we have thought about uh, in the past. And looking at mm -hmm. UNLV and, and some of their schedule, uh, they have played. Uh, obviously, the win at Boise State was good, but lost a time with Utah State. But I don't think they're in a class at Colorado State. I think Colorado State gets it done. Four, seven, eight. Nine, Colorado State wins by double digits tonight. Yeah. Uh, and then JY on the NBA side of it, only play left here. Uh, you're the Embiid uh, and the Sixers are out right now. Uh, you like Chris Stapps over the 16 and a half. Uh, and then let's do. I know you mentioned it earlier, but let's do this. You heat. Uh, you're laying it. No Trey Young for Atlanta. Talk to me. I just don't think the the Hawks are very good. And I think that Jante Murray's trying to get himself out of there. I think the Quinn like, but by, by, by the way, shout out to Atlanta Hawks for firing Nate McMillan, who was a better coach than Quinn Snyder. N no offense. I mean, but I know why they got rid of him because he's fighting with Trey. I can understand that. But I think they're a mess. No Trey. They get busy. Give me the heat minus the points. Uh, and then lastly, JY, the Lakers uh, and their matchup against Brooklyn here, uh, laying a similar number. What do you think about this game? Well, I know you, you had on, you know, earlier, uh, Mark, and, and he just wasn't really feeling, you know, the, this line. I, I'm not going to overcomplicate it, Kevin. The Nets suck right now. I mean, they're just bad. They're bad. There's rumors that they could be moving guys. Now there's rumors that, here we go, here come, here come Bridges, maybe on the block. Now you're loaded up on picks because he hasn't been what they thought. The Lakers got to get right at some point. And this is a team that just lost – Last game, I do believe, for Portland. Nets are terrible. Lakers should roll them. Lakers play double digits tonight. Uh, the Nets have really been struggling a lot, JY, but I thought Mark did make a fair point just about where the line was for Brooklyn in Portland, where the line is tonight for the Lakers. I know they're playing some better ball. They are a, a tough team to trust. What have, you, have you seen the recent tear? Anthony Davis has found himself on in the assist column, 11-5-9 in his last three games, averaging 5.4 assists per game actually now in the month of January. Well, if you look at the Lakers, you, you, listen, the top two players in LeBron and AD have done their job. It's the rest of the Chabronis, uh, Gladys Light, and the Pips, or whatever you want to call them. Well, their notes suck. And they need to be getting, look to get rid of some of these jokers. But AD has played really well. The assists, the rebounds are there. You know, listen, we all know the talent of Anthony Davis. There's no denying the talent of him. You just can't expect AD and LeBron, especially LeBron, I think he's 39 now, to carry this team to a championship. I really do think, and I know he just got hurt. I think Zach Levine would be absolutely fantastic with the Lakers. I, I think that, that is a shot. A guy that can go get his shot. They need to prove it at the two guards. The, the problem with the Lakers is this. To give is to get, right? So you you you, you got to think about this. Reeves has to be part of the trade. And I know the Lakers don't want to get get rid of him because he, he, he starts Why, though? 
exploded because who else is going to let the tree? You, listen, D, they Moore? can send D'Lo out. No, because because they want to look at him. I'm not, you know, no, but nobody wants Zach Levine. This is my problem when the Lakers get in these conversations. It, when when 28 other teams call on Zach Levine, they're like, hey, we'll take Zach and a pick. I know you want to get off the contract. The Lakers call, and it's, uh, listen, let's get Anthony Davis uh, for Zach Levine straight up. I, I don't understand this. Nobody wants Zach Levine. And the Lakers got to give up a legitimate player in Austin Reeves? No way. I, I, just, I just think, listen, that's going to be the starting point. I think they're going to they're gonna push Rob Palenka to see if he's going to make the move. Now, listen, am I, am I going to trade, you know, Austin Reeves for Zach Levine? No. You know, unless, unless mm. by some grace of God, I can get back Levine and Caruso. Do you think Levine and Caruso? Because I think Caruso would be great with the Lakers again. Yeah. Then I would say, okay, maybe I'll give up Reeves. But I'm not giving up Reeves for Levine. No way in hell. You got to give me Caruso too, and then we can talk and make it work. The interesting thing, though, is why Zach Levine is in the news right now is he's about to miss a week or two uh, with an ankle sprain. He's been injured already this season. Uh, the report from Shams Charania uh, of The Athletic uh, is that he re-injured this trying to play through the sprain. Zach Levine already came with some injury question marks. I wonder if that is part of the reason why DeJounte Murray right now seems to be the more intriguing option. Maybe some of it is contract related, even though DeJounte makes a ton of money, but it is just the trust in availability which is obviously paramount if you're a team like the L.A. Lakers, where LeBron and A.D., LeBron due to age, A.D. due to being A.D., there's always wonder about availability there. And if Zach Levine just fits that same exact description of we hope he's available, right, you're no better than the situation the Phoenix Suns are in. Uh, we hope Katie's out there. We hope Beal is out there. We hope Devin's out there. And it's not a situation that you want to be in uh, if you are the L.A. Lakers. I think, again, it makes it interesting. Uh, J.Y., the news that came out in the college basketball landscape is around Terran Shannon Jr. Now, listen, situations like this are, are always difficult to navigate. Um, some very serious allegations brought up against Shannon Jr., uh, but uh, he has been granted the ability to once again join Illinois until they figure out what exactly has kind of happened with his allegations and case and situation as again it's it feels almost a little ugh to do it JY but on court how much of a boost is it bringing back Shannon Jr. to the Illinois uh, Illini it's huge I mean Terry Shannon Jr. is, is an all-american he's one of the best players in the country for an Illinois team without Terrence Shannon Jr. is 4-2 and two in league, right? And if you look at their losses, Kev, what, what, what is their loss? I mean, listen, the Maryland game, I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out. Right? That, that was just an anomaly, right? The other one was 83-78 uh, at Purdue, and they were in the game. So to me, you look at this schedule now, and you look at a, a big game, and this is going to be, listen, folks, this is a really big game. One, Terry Shannon Jr. comes back Sunday versus Rutgers. But a team at Rutgers that I think only has one quad win, they, you know, there's this talk of Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper. Rutgers may mess around and miss a tournament two years in a row, as great of a job as Steve Heichel has come. This is going to be a humongous game in the Big Ten. Why? Because Terry Shannon could vault this team to be maybe the best team in the Big Ten. But a team like Rutgers, where I do believe has – uh, Illinois, and then I think they have Purdue. Rutgers is running out of time, folks. They got to get a win, and this game is at Illinois. Whatever that line is, that place champagne should be rocking. I'm going to like Illinois on Sunday. Let me ask you about another uh, Saturday uh, weekend game. Saturday, Texas uh, making the rounds for all the wrong reasons. A disastrous loss to Central Florida, uh, and then Rodney Terry very annoyed about the horns down. Their attempt to get this right is against the top 10 team in the country in the Baylor Bears. That line is out and available. It's basically picked. Minus 111 Texas money line, minus 108 Baylor Bears money line, coach. Do you, do you like Texas? Or, I mean, can this team right the ship? They, they've been struggling now for a little bit. You know, it's, it's amazing. It, it, this, I think you and I have talked about this before. This, this speaks to the job that Chris Beard did. No offense to Rodney Terry, who did a fantastic job last year. Folks, 
Those were Chris Beard's kids. Chris Beard had laid the foundation. Chris Beard had got them going. This is a new team now, and ever since, you know, getting off to it, if you think about this, look at the games that they've lost or won. Arkansas Ward, Delaware State, Rice, Louisville by one, Wyoming, Texas State. Like, wh where's their good win? Well, three of the last four games they lost to Texas Tech, bottom half of the Big 12, at West Virginia, the worst team in the Big 12, and Central Florida, bottom team in the Big 12, and then you have the Baylor Bears coming in. I know Baylor typically is not a good road team. I just don't think Texas is very good. And then you got a Baylor team coming mm. off a rough loss at Kansas State. Baylor on the money line tomorrow. You know, one other thing in the Big 12. Uh, so Houston had those back-to-back -back losses on the road. And then they laid 12 and a half to Texas Tech. They covered it. They covered it comfortably. I'm just wondering if that's how this is going to go for Houston uh, in Big 12 play, where at home against the bad teams, they're going to get – I mean, they, they're laying 17 and a half tomorrow to Central Florida. But those top games, Houston's going to have to take a couple of them. Now, they haven't appeared yet, but that, those are big games that Houston will be playing uh, sooner than later. Coach, we appreciate it. I know you have us covered for that weekend. College Slate, Joe Lisi up next. Looked like he's been playing in the league for a decade as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smash the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going yeah. to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. best friends like they they like siakam's best friend on the team was chris boucher chris boucher's best friend on the team was pascal siakam they're not american right so like they like they're there's different cliques in the nba and they were very very tight so chris boucher i got rattled like seeing chris boucher and thinking about the memories but raptors responded sports rage late night only on sports grid one that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. <laughs> Thank you. 
Back right here on Sports Grid. I'm Kevin Walsh. It is Game Time Decisions. Joe Lisi's here. How are you, Mr. Go for the Two? <laughs> um, divisional weekend, baby. Nothing better. Mm. Chopping at the bit. Double duty. This is where some guys step up and other guys, you know, can't, can't, can't make the, they can't follow Not everybody through. can hang. I don't know. Primetime play is somebody. Man. Uh, listen, listen, big players make big plays. I said that to you. Now, in the NBA, it's not go for the two. It's go for the three. And usually it's six plus. Yeah. Now, before we do that, do you have any NBA plays tonight? Uh, I haven't really looked. But I'll tell you, if there's one person oh, wow. I'm going to be on, here's the thing. Is Dallas playing tonight? No, right? Dallas is off. <laughs> no Mavs. No yeah, Mavs. Next game they play, I'm all in on Kyrie. Kyrie threes, mm. Kyrie points. But I'll get you a play before the thing is over. Don't worry. I'll look. I'll look in the. In the no, but then you're going to be distracted. We need you locked no, in I'm here. I'm locked right? and loaded on the plays this weekend. What are you All kidding? Right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, uh, as always, I listen. Because I, I get to talk to you for, you know, six hours, right, between Saturday and Sunday. So I got to try and find plus money. All right. Yeah. You like the bills this weekend, right? Yeah, but I don't love that game. I, I do like somebody in that game to score a touchdown. So I mean, is no, but hold on, I got I got I want to throw a number at you. Go ahead. Jordan Love and Josh Allen to both record 600 passing yards in the playoffs, plus 500. Oh, in the playoffs? Really? <laughs> Wait I a came second. prepared. Say that again. Mm-hmm. Jordan mm-hmm. Love and Jordan Josh Love. Allen. Now, yes, individually, it's not combined, but oh. individually, each guy has to record 600 yards. So Jordan Love would need like 230. I think it's 220. No. Is that right? No. I guess he would need like 320. Maybe. It's something scary like that. Because of the weather. Now that I back off with that, I'm a little. That could be wet, but I like them this weekend. You, you, you get me all twisted here. I have I have plays that I absolutely adore. I don't love. I adore these plays. These plays are close right, to my who's, heart. So, who's the big touchdown scorer in the Bills game you're hiding out on? How about this Meekle Hardeman? And I like the Bills, but nice. this Meekle, eight to one. The kid's a speedster out of Athens. Always steps up in big games. Everybody's looking Does at he? you know. And wow. you go you go back to even when Tyreek was there, Miko was the guy. He was sneaky good. Sneaky eight to one to score a touchdown this weekend. So what about what about the yards? Thirteen and a half. For Miko? That's his prop. Yeah. He blows through that. That's one reception and he blows through that. That's not a bad play. He had three targets. Now only three catches, but I mean, only only, uh, only one catch, but still, All right. no, only uh, one catch right. last week. But the, yeah, so but if he can bring in, in one more target, yeah, they're gonna loosen him up. I'm telling you, I like this Miko, Miko Hardman, All right, eight hold on, to one me... touchdown. All right, all right, you can get me in on on the yards. Uh, the touchdown, debatable. Touchdowns, debatable. Okay. Eight to one. Uh, all right, Lions, Bucks. Who's your touchdown? This is good. Who's the touchdown guy? Jamison Williams. Mm. What do you think okay. about that? You how, think how about speed, this? huh? This is going to be a potpourri of scoring, though. I altered it all the way up to 60 and a half. This is, you know, party over. This is it. <laughs> Dude, take a ride. Uh-huh. Play some games, you know, party over. Tampa, what Detroit. about this wheel, Kate Otten? You playing his under? No, I'm not touching him. Not This guy had a contract year in last week. He had a contract year in one game. Give him the contract based yeah. off the, what do you have, 90 yards, that guy? Unbelievable. Yeah, it was, it was unfortunate to watch. Are you a Sam Laporta guy in this game no. at all? Weak no. healthier? Jameer Gibbs in the receiving game. I think they eat. you got to oh. get Jameer Gibbs out in space on a linebacker. Oh, or a I saw that. Something that the Hold Eagles on. failed to do. We were talking about it. If they're going to bring uh, pl- pressure off the edge, the check down nah, to Jameer Gibbs is huge. But nah, I was gonna say, there's a Gibbs 100-plus receiving yards for the whole postseason is plus 130. 
God. That's probably not enough. How about a hundred plus in this game? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I knew, I knew I couldn't get him for two receiving touchdowns for the whole postseason's eleven to one. Nah. That doesn't do it for you. No. Uh, uh, all what right. Are you all right. For? Who's are the who's big the big? Okay, big, big money. No, no. no want? I want to try and sell you because I know you're very busy and you don't have a lot of time to go through. Uh, some of these, some of these exquisite shops. Like you go to the grocery store, you're on aisle 16, 17, 18. I'm down in 36, 38. Right. You know what I mean? You're down, so, you're down in like different. a home section with the armor all, and you found, so you found like a special down there. Listen, and meanwhile, Donnie down the bread aisle, the milk aisle, the water <laughs> aisle, and he gets out of there. And he's home. He's home. Ten minutes and in. Wins. Uh, and he wins. And he wins. Every time. <laughs> He got the he got he got he got the water on sale. He got a case for four bucks. Unbelievable. Uh, we're so happy for him. All right, touchdown score: Niners Packers. Who's catching your attention? Jordan Love, eleven to one. Yeah, you had to see that coming. Plus, I you like his over rushing eight and a half and altered to twenty five plus at plus six thirty. Everybody looking at the passing yards. It's going to be a wet track. He, he runs in the slop. Jordan Love over the eight and a half. I do you like think. Do you like Purdy to find the end zone? What pro, plus five fifty? Nah, nah, not enough. Jordan not Love. Enough. That's that's a ten yard run for Jordan Love. Eleven yard scamper into the corner of the left end zone. Eleven to one. Bing. They're not even hanging him. Yes, they are. They're not eight even hanging half. him for two touchdowns. Who? Jordan Where is Love? he? I don't know. Yeah. It's They're not even ha- – wow. That's how worried they are for the two-plus? Are you kidding me? Hold on. I got to shop around. I'm changing grocery stores. Give me a second. You I went need to know how much this costs. You went from Acme to Shop. You went Acme. Now you're in uh, Stop and Shop. I, see, like, this is where, like, uh, it's 75-1 to one for him to have two rushing touchdowns. I don't know. Maybe. Why not? Right. Why not? Right, exactly. That's how you sell me. I, that I'll, is an unbelievable I, number. I sold you. I sold you on that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Hold on. Let me see if there's any other Jordan Love more? stuff. No, more. Really. What do you mean? I got, a, I got a whole case here. I got a duffel bag of uh, prop bets. What else you got? Three for a hundred. Three for a hundred. What do you got? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> nah. Go ahead. Keep going. What, what game? You want you want that game? Aaron Jones. Yeah, what else he got in that game? Plus, oh, plus receiving. 160, yes, plus 162. I'll give you on that. Here's the thing. I heard he's Keep not going to run a lot in the fourth ago, quarter. Makes sense. Two years ago, in the slop in the, in the Lambeau Field, the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Remember the game that Aaron Rodgers, he didn't step up? Who was the leading receiver against San Francisco a couple of years ago? It wasn't it wasn't Devontae Adams. It was Aaron Jones with 100 plus receptions. They started to get him involved, and LaFleur is very smart. Only one target last week, right? Now all of a sudden, watch him unleash the beast. Six, seven targets through the air. Everybody looking on the ground. They hit him through the air. No, again, I told you. I heard. He, I heard. Be careful on the ground this week. Trailing in the fourth quarter, can't get this. Doesn't fit the game script uh, that some people uh, are seeing. All right. So then, what about the first game? Totals forty three and a half. Very low. Yeah, I'm not touching the total, but we're going in with the match. I told you, twenty one and a half, and the match at plus five fifty to hit pay dirt. I mean, that is just way too low for John Match. He had forty four yards last week. And because Donnie comes in with the Robert Woods, they cut him in half. They sliced him and diced him down to 21. I mean, are we serious now? The Mets is a big game player. How about this? You want a really deep shot? Xavier Hutchinson. Mm. I took him at 11 and a half yards. Big time player plays Did, in cold are they weather hanging his alts? What about this Brevin Jordan? No Brevin Jordan, backup He's tight a end. Miami guy. You're going to roll out of Miami uh, outside of David Njoku. You're like, come on now. Right. Come on. You know, Miami, you want Dalton Schultz, 34 and a half. Low I number. Like that wow. Number. So I'm going in. Supposedly everybody's on single Terry's under. I'm going over. Can we ult this guy to 50 receiving yards? 50. Hold on. No, hold, hold on. 
Hold on. Now, don't name... Everybody's on Singletary under? Who who could everybody be on Singletary receiving under? I, I do coast or to coast. Or they on under rushing. I do coast to coast every week, not to throw out other shows on the network, but I'm just saying, uh, and they had a statistic from one of the books. Major, hmm. Joe Poe, 86% of the money on Devin Singletary's under. 86% of the money. But sell, receiving? Sell the receiving. That's stunning. It could be a big breakout game through the air. One catch. Yep. Well, What's the long reception prop? There you Not go. Hang. <laughs> They're nervous. <laughs> They're nervous. <laughs> I told you. What do you yeah. want to do? I know that face. But see, I'm already looking to get a good wheel play in that game, which is, let me see if I can find it. I want the most receiving yards in the game, Nico Collins. That's what okay. I want. Here it is. Plus 100, Nico Collins, most receiving yards. Where's Xavier Who Hutchinson? challenges him? Mech, the Mechie. What's wrong with this The Mechie. 30 to 1, Hutch. Oh. And where's the Mech? Uh, 15, not enough. Come on. What do you mean not enough? 15 and 30 to 1. To lead to this one. game? Yeah. Let's see. What's John Mechie's uh, top games on the season? I think he's had like What does he top yard. out at? 70? When Tank Dell was in there, he had one big game. I think oh. when they played Tampa. Imagine Tank Dell was still around. You like Tank yeah. Dell almost won the triple crown uh, in college. He got screwed. Yeah. Nice. His, that was his, his highest game was the 44 he just had on the year. John Mechie. Well, you said 70 like, plus. He's a... What did he have against Tampa? Did he play against Tampa? No. That game 39 Yeah, 38. one for 14. That was the Noah, Noah Brown stepped up in that game. I still like Mechie. Yeah. Mechie's a slot receiver. No, but, you got to go to the secondary yeah, options. But, I mean, you just you just try to sell me a bag of goods. I did. Nico Collins, plus 100, most receiving yards. Who? Hold on. So who else, Ben, could be the most for you? Could I'll Nico give you all, Hardman all, lead that I'll give game? you all the bets. Ready? All right, so I like No, Mechie I don't need overs. all of them. you got to do it tomorrow. So what do you want? You're picking and choosing here. You want the sides or the totals? I'm playing fast and loose. I, I, I'll give you a fast. You're worried about I got to give this out. Diggs? No. Go ahead. No. James Cook receiving. He had, a, he, had a, uh, he had 80 yards receiving in the first matchup. He did against Kansas City. I know he did. So why can't we go I back know. to him? You're, living, you're living in Murray. this sweet spot. I think they use Lat Murray inside the goal. Oh, line. with the Lat Murray. Come Why? on. Don't do Lat Murray to me. Why? I don't want to do Lat Murray. Because I don't think he should play. He's bad. He's not good. He's got thick legs, though, inside the goal. <laughs> line. He doesn't go down. Thick thighs. <laughs> Maybe Ty Chandler, you can get me on. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. We'll send him out Can't here wait. with a best bet. Appreciate it. Give me the NBA wheel play on the way in the break. Stroud looked like he's been playing in the league for a decade as the former number one, not number two, number one overall pick. Give me the nine and a half, outright, plus 385, outright, we smash the 49. The Tampa stuff just doesn't feel repeatable. I've always thought that Baker Mayfield was better than people give him credit for. Make sure you are locked in. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid.
they were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're there's different cliques in the NBA, and they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories. But Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Closing out Game Time Decisions. I'm Kevin Walsh with you on a Friday night. Coming up next is In Game Live. This weekend, pro football today, 10 a.m. start time Saturday, 9 a.m. start time Sunday. It's a little reverse of what you're used to uh, with our weekend scheduling, uh, but it'll be myself, Donnie Wrightside, and Joe Lisi with you starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday, 9 a.m. on Sunday. I might have to clip that and set it as my ringtone so I make sure uh, I am here at the right time tomorrow morning. Don't worry. I'll be there. Sunday, uh, uh, we'll see. But I'll be here uh, for you. Uh, but let's close this out with a little bit of a best bet here tonight. DeJounta Murray over six and a half assists for the Atlanta Hawks. No Trey Young. Now, this number, the juice has moved. I've seen minus 160, I think, still be on a six and a half. I know for a lot of people, you're not going to want to bet that number. I was able to bet it at minus 130. Good for me. What does it matter for you if you haven't bet it yet? Seven and a half or plus money. Maybe play it a little less. Just be cautious. But it still lines up. DeJounta in this season with two games, no uh, Trey Young, nine assists, ten assists. Trey played Miami twice this year. Double-digit assists in both of those games. The difference between seven and eight, where it would just factor in, is you bring in last year DeJounta Murray's seven extra games played without Trey Young, giving us a nice nine-game sample size. He went over six and a half and eight out of the nine. I think he landed seven, I want to say twice, which would still give you six and three. Uh, Worst-case scenario, it would have been three times, so that would then obviously make it five and four. It is still a winning prospect. You're bringing plus money in uh, at plus 100, so the five and four number uh, would still be playable there. But I'm on the DeJounta Murray over six and a half assists, as well as Bradley Beal over one and a half made threes. Pals allow the most opponent three-point attempts per game at almost 40. The Phoenix Suns, they don't take enough. You should get an increase in volume, which is good for Bradley Beal, who we're seeing an increase in volume in recent games. Uh, and if we get six attempts out of Beal tonight on the year, four to five times that happens, we've seen two-plus makes. That's game time decisions. I'm Kevin Walsh. Good luck.